Welcome to Get Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering Practice Problem 6.12. Now, this particular circuit is accompanied by a bunch of things, a bunch of variables, and we are asked to find a lot of things. So, I'm not actually going to follow this exact order because some of these actually come before the others. Because one of these help, you'll find that one of these help us to find one of the variables which come before in the question so you'll see that as we proceed but in the end we would have solved everything which you asked to find so that is that let's continue to solve the problem so the first part asks for i2 the initial condition for i2 or the initial value of i2 so i2 is here it is indicated across the three henry inductor so now that you, if you look at here, there is a current which actually comes in, which is assumed to come in. And at this point or at this junction, obviously it's gonna split into these two paths. So we can say that I is equals to I1, which is over there and I2 at the top. So I1 plus I2, we're asked to find the initial value of I2, which means let's put the initial values of all of these in here just so we suit this question. So to find the initial value of I2, we would then say I2 of zero is equal to I zero, which is the total current, subtract I1, zero, right? So we do know I zero, it's given to us in the question, and we have a formula for I1. So we can just substitute zero here for it to suit our purposes. So now that we have that, we're going to say I2, 0, is equal to I0. So it's given to us as 1.4. So that's 1.4. Subtract I1 of 0. I'm just going to substitute 0 into there. And e to the power 0 is 1, which means this is only going to be 0 0.6. So we're going to have 1.4 subtract 0 0.6. And the answer to that is 0 0.8 amperes. So that is the first part of the question. So we have solved part A of the question. So now, now let's, uh, sorry, now let's proceed to erase this. So it creates some more space to move on to the other parts of the question. So now moving on to I2, I2T. If you look at the I2 over here, it shares two nodes with the, with the I1, with the, with the inductor, which has I1 across it, right? And there is a V1 which is indicated. Now that the two inductors are in parallel, it also means they have the same voltage. Now we have more information about I1 than I2, but we are not interested in finding I2 of T. So we are going to use I1 and V1 to actually move on to finding I2. And this is how. Since both of these are in parallel, they have the same voltage, V1 as indicated. So this is the formula for inductor, which says V is equal to L di over dt. Now that they have the same voltage, V1 is equal to L. Now let me use the subscript of the values of the inductors. So for three Henry's, I'm gonna use subscript three, and for six, I'm gonna use six. So V1 is equal to three di2, because that is the current which flows through it, i2 divided by dt. And this same thing applies because the same V1 is across both of the inductors. So V1 is also equals to L6 di1 divided by dt. So we have this information and this information is going to help us to find V1. And then after finding V1, we're going to plug it in here. And this V1 and L3 are going to help us to find I2, which we don't know. So we're just basically trying to limit or to reduce the number of variables to work with because here we don't know v1 we don't know i2 and the question is asking for i2 so we're going to use this part to find v1 and use it there and then finally find i2 so let's do that quickly we're just going to find v1 right now so v1 is equal to 6 di i1 is given to us in the question as 0.6 e to the minus 2t so 0.6 e to the minus 2t, we're just going to differentiate that. Therefore, V1 is equal to 6 multiplied by negative 2 multiplied by 0.6 e subtract to net. 
And now we have V1, subtract this is negative 12, and negative 12 multiplied by 0 0.6 is going to be, so if 0 0.6 reaches 6 into that, so that goes 1, 12, what is happening? Okay, let's, let's see this. This is negative 12, I'm just trying to do this without a calculator. So this is negative 12 multiplied by 6 divided by 10. So we are going to have divided by 2, we're going to have 5 divided by 2, we're going to have 6. Then we are going to have 5 into 36, which is 7. So not forgetting the negative, so negative 7. And a remain, remainder, remainder of remainder of 1. Now 1, adding a 0 to the 1, then that's going to introduce a decimal sign. And 5 into 10 is 2. So this is what we're going to have as our final answer. So that is that. And then we're going to multiply finally by e to the uh, negative 2t. And this is our v1. So it's negative 7.2e to the minus 2t volts. Cool. So that is that. We now have our v1. We can use this v1 now to find what the question is asking for. So the question is actually asking for i2 of t. And as you can see, v1 is actually asking the next question. So we've already answered that. We've already answered that part because this is our v1. So our v1 of t is negative 7.2 e to the negative 2t. So we've already answered that part. Now let's come back to finding i2 of t. So we use this formula now. We're going to say V1, which is negative 7.2. Using this formula, it says V1 is equal to L3 di2 over dt. So we're going to say that is equal to 3 di2 divided by dt. We're interested in finding i2. So we're going to integrate both sides, and we're going to have 1 over 3, so i2 is going to be equal to 1 over 3, integral of negative 7.2e to the minus net dt. So now doing this quickly, we're going to have i2 is equal to negative 7.2 divided by 3, integral of e that dt. And the integral of this is basically equals to, we're going to have, so taking, taking all of that out, we are basically ju just going to have the same thing of this value so we're gonna have that and then divide it by negative 2 and then multiply on this side negative 7.23 on the outside and then we are gonna have the limit as follows and not forgetting to add since we're dealing with the i2 not forgetting to add the i2 zero which we got in the previous question of 0 0.8 so this is what we basically have. We just you can just punch this into your calculator or something. Doesn't really matter how you go about it. So this is negative two divided by that. It's gonna be 3.6. 3.6 divided by three should be 1.2. So 1.2 is gonna be a constant value. And here you are gonna have, so took out this and here you're basically just gonna have E that and subtract one. And then you're going to have plus 0 0.8. So this is our I2 of T. And the final answer is going to be 1.2e to the sub, uh, minus 2t. Subtract 1.2 plus 0 0.8. And therefore, I2 of T, you can just add these two up. It's going to be negative, negative 0 0.4. So this is our final answer. I2 of t is equal to 1.2 e to the minus 2t subtract to 0.4 amperes. And we have finally answered this question, which was asking us for I2 of t. Now, after finding I2 of t, we said before that this I splits into I1 and I2. So I of t is equal to I1 of t plus I2 of t. We have now just found I2 of t and we're given I1 of t in the question. So I of t is therefore equal to 0 0.6 e to the minus 2 plus the value of I2 of t, which we just found, which is 1.2 e that subtract 0 0.4. And the final answer of I of t is going to be that 
added to that is going to be 1.8, right? 1.8 e to the minus 2, negative 0 0.4 amperes. And that is your value, or that is your formula for I of T, which is the second part of the second question. And so we are essentially done with the second part of the second question. And we can move on to find whatever is left in the question. So we're left with finding V2 of T and V of T. So let's do that quickly. Let me just erase all of this to create space. Okay. So now move on to find V2 of T. As you can see in the circuit, V2 is indicated across the eight, the eight Henry's. And we now found the total current, which is going to be the total current, which is going to be the same current exiting that point. And we know for sure that V2 is equals to L8 di divided by dt. And we found I of t to be 1.8 e to the minus 2t subtract 0 0.4, which means we're going to say V2 of t is equals to L8, which is 8 and differentiate the formula which you have above for i of t, which is one point. This pen is fading. Okay. So this is basically what we're going to have, but this is basically what we're going to do is equals to eight multiplied by negative two multiplied by 1.8 and multiplied by e to the minus two t, and this is zero. So this is basically all that we have. And therefore this is going to be this is going to be 3.6 and 3 points. What is happening here for the value of this? Okay, let's punch this into a calculator just to be sure where is my calculator if I could just find it. Okay, so this is, let's just do it. This is our negative 3.6 and this is 8. Now multiplying that, this is basically what we're going to have. Let's just do some uh, primary school math because I cannot find my calculator. This is going to be 8 times 6 is 8. And taking four up there, and we're gonna have eight times three is twenty-four added to that is eight. So twenty-eight point eight is our answer. So now that we have that answer, we're gonna say V2 of T is equals to twenty. Is it negative? Yes, it's negative because it's a negative sign there. So negative twenty-eight point eight E to the negative two T volts. So this is your V2 of T. And now we're going to proceed to find, so we now have that, we're now going to proceed to find Vt. Now Vt is a sum of V1, which is across these two, plus V2. So V of t is equal to V1 of t plus V2 of t. And as you can remember, we found V1 of t when we are interested in finding I2 of t. So V1 of t was found to be negative uh, 7.2 e to the minus 2t. And we now just recently found this v2 of t to be negative 28.8 e to the minus 2t. Now, so we're just essentially going to subtract it. Uh, that is what we have. And so the final answer is basically going to be the sum of this in the negative sign or or in the negative side or in the negative range. So at, adding 0.2 to this is going to be 38. It's going to be nope. Adding 0.2 to this is going to be 29. Sorry. So after adding 29, adding a 7 to 29 is going to give us 36. But in the negative side, so negative 36 e to the minus 2t volts. And that is all for this question. I have answered all of these. And these are basically all the things which we are asked to find. And I hope you got everything.